Welcome to the video for MLE Plus, our submission for the Simulink Challenge. My name is Willy Bernal and I'm a part of the team from the Real-Time and Embedded Systems Laboratory at the University of Pennsylvania. We developed MLE Plus, a MATLAB Simulink Toolbox for integrated design and deployment of energy-efficient building controls. There are many realistic simulation engines for buildings available today. One of these is Energy Plus an energy analysis and thermal load simulation program developed by the USA Department of Energy. Energy Plus provides a user with high fidelity physical models for building systems. It allows you to model building materials and simulate the impact of outer conditions like solar radiation or relative humidity. Heating, ventilation and air conditioning equipment like this unitary multi-zone box can also be modeled in Energy Plus. For example, you can simulate the air mass flow rates and the dynamic heat exchange occurring at the heating and cooling coils. It also allows modeling systems like chillers and cooling towers. However, Energy Plus does not allow access to certain control variables in their models, making it difficult to implement low-level controls, like setting the damper positions. It also does not provide an adequate control interface making it very difficult or impossible to implement advanced control algorithms like model predictive control. This is why we want to leverage the high fidelity physical models of Energy Plus and the scientific computational capability of MATLAB and Simulink. Towards this goal, we created a co-simulation toolbox, MLE Plus. In this video, we will show you examples of its control and design capabilities in controlling HVAC equipment for the building design in Energy Plus. Also, we will showcase the ability of MLE Plus to communicate with real building equipment for control deployment. The model consists of a small five-zone office located in California during the month of July. The simulated time is seven days. The structure consists of four rooms in the perimeter plus a larger core zone in the center. The north axis is shown in the video for reference. The building will be modeled in Energy Plus while the HVAC system will be simulated in Simulink. The Energy Plus co-simulation block contains all the necessary parameters for communication between Simulink and Energy Plus. MLE Plus will make sure the input and output parameters are exchanged between both programs in a synchronized fashion at every time step of the simulation. The Energy Plus block will represent the building and will output the room temperature as well as other conditions. It will take as inputs the heat flow rate for each zone. Let's start the simulation. The simulated time is 7 days with a time step of 2 minutes. The main block system consists of 3 modules. The first one will decide on the temperature set points for the rooms, depending on office occupancy or work schedules. It will produce the heating and cooling set points for the rooms. The second one is the central HVAC block. It sets the supplier temperature. Within this, the operating mode block implements a state flow model to decide whether to mechanically cool, free cool, or heat, depending on the return air and outer temperature. The second block will set the desired supply air temperature with a simple proportional gain. This set point will be fed into the thermal model block. Inside the thermal model, we implemented an economizer damper, which decides how much outdoor air to use in order to save power, and it decides in what mode to operate, heating or cooling, according to the outdoor conditions and the return air temperature. Once the economizer has decided on the working mode and how much outdoor air to mix, the heating and cooling coils will regulate the temperature according to its local control and some maximum and minimum constraints. Finally, the actual supply air temperature is calculated and fed to the VAB box model. This block contains the model VAB boxes for each zone. It will calculate the mass flow rate at each inlet. For example, the VAB core contains a state flow model of a thermostat detecting when to cool or heat, depending on the room conditions and the supply air temperature. We implemented a basic proportional control to calculate the mass flow rate. 
We also model the logic of a reheat coil that decides when to recondition the air supply. Reheating will be triggered if the main supply air temperature is too low and the room needs to be heated. These coils add extra air conditioning at the room level. Let's go back and take a look at the main system outputs and inputs. This graph shows the heating and cooling set points for the rooms, and it depends on the time of the day, according to the schedules. We show six days on the screen. The outdoor temperature is also shown, and this corresponds to real weather data from San Francisco, California. Also, we include the five zone temperatures. The lower part of the graph shows the outside air damper signal, which regulates the amount of fresh air into the building air loop. Notice it never goes below 0.3. This is the minimum amount of fresh air in the system. The purple signal is the state of the central HVAC. High corresponds to cooling while the low is heating. Here, the temperature of the rooms is very low. This triggers the heating state to raise the air supply temperature. Let's take a look at the inputs to the building. In this case, the heat flow rate for each zone. Mass flow rate we calculated in the Simulink model accounts for this heat flow. You can observe that there is only two days where heating is required for the rooms. The core zone requires less heating and cooling compared to the other rooms. This is expected as the core is less affected by changes in the weather. In this example, I show you the capability of MLE Plus for cost simulation with very simple controllers. However, we could use more advanced scheduling schemes for the HVAC equipment like model predictive control while using the realistic physical building models of ENERGY PLUS. To interface the BagNet protocol with MLE Plus, we use a building energy simulation testbed. Testbed is a scale model of a building with four zones. Each zone has a heating element and a cooling element. Sensors monitor the temperature level of each zone in real time and report the data to the gateway. The gateway monitors the power consumption for the building using a non-invasive current sensor. The dynamics of each zone are similar to the dynamics of a real building as can be seen here. The building model is kept inside a larger enclosure which simulates the outside environment for the building. The dashboard displays the state of each zone, the status of the wireless sensor network, and the real-time energy consumption of the building. During initialization, the user can set the operating points for heating and cooling. The operating points control the brightness levels of the bulb, and hence the heating capacity of the zone. We implemented a BagNet interface in Simulink that allows us to exchange BagNet messages with our building testbed. The zone temperatures of each zone is sent via BagNet to the zone controller, which calculates the actuation signal, which is then sent back to the building via BagNet. In this example, we are using a simple rule-based control for the zone as shown here. The control tries to keep the temperature of the zone between the desired threshold. Each zone in the building testbed acts as a BagNet device with its own unique ID. The controller in Simulink can control the testbed in real time by exchanging BagNet messages. The messages exchanged over BagNet can be seen here. This concludes our video. Thanks for watching. Remember that Emily Plus is an open source software that you can find available at the website on the screen.